Jesus always used his power to empower other people. They were always more because of how he treated them, never less. Just think about that for just a second. There have been many situations where I paused and stopped and thought, okay, the way I've been treating my wife, talking to her, tone of my voice, look in my eyes, she is now less because of how I'm treating her. That is not being a godly husband. She should be more because of how I treat her. Welcome to Family Life Today, where we want to help you pursue the relationships that matter most. I'm Shelby Abbott, and your hosts are Dave and Ann Wilson. You can find us at FamilyLifeToday.com. This is Family Life Today. So today we get to listen to a talk from the Love Like You Mean cruise that we were on just a few weeks ago. Wasn't it fun? It was awesome. So we left out of Miami and we came back to the port in Miami just in time for the Super Bowl. (laughs) Uh, But it was awesome. It was incredible. We spoke, I think, seven times total. There were great breakout sessions, keynote sessions, comedians, singers, artists, you name it. You know, almost 4,000 people on the boat and it was incredible. And you don't want to miss next year. You can sign up right now at familylifetoday.com and go on the Love Like Community Cruise. But we were... Uh, part of a panel that Ron and Nan Deal sort of hosted. Yeah. And you and I, with Dr. Julie Slattery and Dr. Michael Seitzma, talking about questions from the audience. So we didn't even know what they were going to ask. I'm not sure why we were on the panel. <laughs> I was very nervous and scared. I feel like they were all experts in their field. Yeah, and their field is in the area of intimacy. And, and uh, counselors and therapists. Yeah, and so we were the non-counselors <laughs> sitting in the middle of the stage, and you're going to get to hear some of the questions we got to answer. So enjoy this. You asked. These are the questions that you submitted, and so we are going to start answering them. And I'm going to start off with a pretty easy one. Oh, that's easy. good. Just to ease Thanks, you in. Yeah. We're on this cruise. You've been gone for a week. I think this is a great question to ask before you get off the boat. How do we maintain the connection that we felt on the cruise once we get home? How do we recognize when we're getting off track and how do we come back together? Mm. I think a lot of us know that there's a real correlation between our walk with God and our relationships or our marriage. And In the book of Revelation, there's a passage where John gets a revelation from Jesus and he speaks to churches. Some of you recognize he says to a church, I love everything you're doing, but you've lost your first love. Mm -hmm. And he says what? And I think in our marriage, we lose our first love. We lose that zeal and that passion. It could be in a month. And that can be normal. Like we're all doing this all the time. Yeah. And it happens in our walk with God. And so he says, repent and do the things you did at first. And Ann and I wrote about this in Vertical Marriage. It's like, well, there's the repent part, which is turn, stop living the way you are. You got to turn and go 180 degrees back. But then what were the things you used to do when you had passion, Mm -hmm. when you were dating and you're going out and when you're first married, probably you were talking, you were listening. There was, come on, give me a hand. (laughs) There was non-sexual touch. No, there was none of that. (laughs) I actually had hair then. She would... She'd rub her hands through my hair. It's better now. Keep doing it. It might come back. But um, I mean, really, we're joking around, but it really was. I know for our marriage, and I bet you did the same thing, those things go away. I rarely, but I'm embarrassed to say this, we don't kiss Mm -hmm. like we used to kiss, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I know most couples don't. It may be a peck before you leave or come home. But when's the last time you grabbed her or grabbed him and just made out? Your kids hate it, but you made out. <laughs> and it wasn't sexual. It wasn't leading to anything else. But I really do love you. And I really want to hold you. And maybe not even kiss, but just hold. I, I went too far. But are you those hold are my... the things you used to do. And look at me. I'm holding her hand I this know, whole I time. I know. I like it. It's like, well, this is fun. Yeah. Are we going to do this? It's, is it because Julie and Mike are here, too? Yeah. Hey, where's <laughs> the You're trying to right here? The You're surrounded by us. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Go, honey. Here, here's what she loves right here. Oh, when I touch oh, her feet. Yes, yes. I am this not kidding. Yes. This is 
is amazing. This Look is foreplay right here. Like <laughs> yes. Yeah, Forget the hand. Tonight. This is like the late night one. It could get a little. <laughs> I think, too, when we come back from anything significant, whether it be a vacation or a conference, I, I try and we try to be intentional about mm -hmm. our conversations. Mm -hmm. It's easy to talk about nothing but kids or grandkids. Schedules. Yeah, yeah. schedules. But just mm -hmm. to say, like, you have notes. Dave's really good at taking notes of just even going back back to what you learned or heard or something you might have jotted down in your mind or on your phone of just talking about what did you think about that? What did you feel about that? What was your best session what did you hear that you would like to really live out? I think those are I mean, always... we're done talking, but I will say this. When I say, let's talk about what the speaker said tonight, I, I don't know if your wife is like this, guys. It lights her up. Yes. It's like she's chasing me around the house after that. It's unbelievable because it's spiritual in nature. <laughs> and it's romantic to her. Is it true for you? You ladies? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What There's else something. are they going to say? Yeah, yeah. What else are they say? <laughs> well, no, not at all. Dude. <laughs> no, that's not attractive. Yeah. But I think, too, and I didn't say this one in the first session, but I think we can still be creative when we get home. I mean, I don't need to come on this cruise and wait for somebody else to hang a gift on my door. I can hang a gift on the door at home Man, and surprise this them. this is wow. good stuff. Go. I mean, I could get creative. I mean, we have not watched TV since we've been here. Mm -hmm. And we will go home and get in a rut. Yes. We could have a three-course meal, not every night, sorry, but you know, <laughs> why not cook something like that together? We could do those things, but we don't. We That's get in a rut, good. we get busy with all this and that, and we could still get creative. We don't have to wait for the family life crew staff to hang something on our door. So, Ju ooh, I'm Julie on my just, box. Julie just got Mike a gift. I yes. did. It was a yeah. Yeah. What was it? He's sitting I, right there. I wanted to surprise him. Like there was this this thing he told me that he wanted. And I'm like, I really want to surprise him. So I bought it last week. And I put it in one of the family life bags, you know, that they put on your door. Oh, nice. Uh, and I was like, I was trying to arrange it so that I wouldn't be in the room when he got in the room and it looked all official. So I think I got you. I surprised you, right? Yeah. There you go. That Very, nice. Good. Very nice. Yeah. Good Very nice. Good job, Julie. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, but what part of that question, too, is how do we know when we're getting off course? And boy, is that a great question. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You guys are from the Motor City, so I'm going to use an example you'll like. All right. Yeah, there you go. You <laughs> like, is that good that I said that? You're not go, offended? Julie, yeah. Okay. Motor City. So, uh, so a lot of times you get a check engine light or a change the oil light on mm. your dashboard. And sometimes you ignore that and you keep driving the car <laughs> to the place that it breaks down. Uh, that would be me. Yes, that would be you. And... And this is the same way with your marriage. There are signs that say, hey, slow down, check the oil. You know, signs like there's tension in your relationship. You're not communicating. Uh, sexual intimacy is not happening. It's just you've got that that just frustration towards each other. And and guys, sometimes your wife is the che check engine light. Mm -hmm. Like she usually is going to be more sensitive to that lack of connection. And if she says things like, I just don't feel close to you or we're not talking you might just want to drive and be like, oh, we're fine. But when you get those indications, don't wait until the crisis happens. Pull out those notes or even reach out to a counselor and say, hey, we've got to get back to some of those basic things that got us into a better place. That's good. Let me ask you on a follow-up. for Look you. at that. Look at that. She's just <laughs> taking over. I love it. For you guys, <laughs> if your wife said to you, I don't feel like we're connecting, I don't feel like we're doing well, What's the next step for the average guy? What should be the next step? Those are two different questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one do you want? That's exactly right. Welcome Go to ahead, my life Mike. right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah. The answer Which to the first one, one is probably the what wrong should? thing. The answer to the second one may yeah. be right. <laughs> well, I'll just tell you what I would do, that my old self, my flesh, would get defensive. Because what I would hear is blame, yeah, right? And that's the thing I have to manage in me. Now, I don't think this is necessarily every guy, but I do think it's easy for us to hear uh, a, a complaint as criticism. And instead, we need to try to stay objective a little bit, step back from it personally, and listen and try to hear what's around it. What does it mean? What is it that you want? What do you desire instead of what's happening? Mm. 
and turn off my defensiveness so I can turn on my ears. That's me. That's what I got to do. Yeah. It's shifting. We'll talk about, Julie and I will talk about um, curiosity tomorrow. It's shifting into a curious stance of, okay, what's going on for you and how can I understand that? Um, because if I step in to do what I think is right, it's probably not going to be. Mm. Um, but the two of us can figure it out together. Mm-hmm. I think one of the oddest things about complaints that we have for one another in our relationship is, is this thought. If you can slow down yourself long enough to realize that when they make a complaint, whatever it is, it is really a request. They're looking for more of you. They're looking for more usness, more togetherness, safety, connection, touch, communication, heart to heart, whatever that is, they're asking for more rather than saying you're bad. But if you don't put your defensiveness away, you never can get curious Mm -hmm. about what it is that they're really asking for. But that's really tough to do, though. Yes, it is. I don't know that that's very human. I'm going to go into that defensive stance and, and how do I shift into it requires me to believe and to believe in who you are and listen to the heart. I tell couples all the time, can you listen to the heart of what your spouse is saying? Their skill is really bad. Um, The skill in which they're trying to communicate it is not working. It often does come across critical and condemning. And, but what is their heart asking for? So you're saying, even though the packaging may be really ugly, really bad, there may be something inside worth there's always something in there worth listening to. I mean, you wouldn't have married them if they weren't truly, there's something precious in them. And we lose track of that when my defensiveness and you know feeling criticized and feeling uh, all of that rises up, uh, my humanness comes out. But if I can believe in them, then I can start to lean in and hear what's saying. And then I can shift into a curious stance, create space that invites them to step in and unpack. That's tough to do. That's that's a lifetime of discipleship that I'm still figuring out. We're listening to a panel that was on the Love Like You Mean It marriage cruise, which was pretty phenomenal because the attendees on the boat got to ask the questions that they've been wanting to find some answers to. Yeah, and I actually, when we were asked to be a part of that panel, first of all, I thought, why us? <laughs> Secondly, I thought, what's a panel going to do on a boat rather than a keynote speaker? And the panel ended up being really pretty powerful because, like you said, we were addressing the issues that our <clears throat> listeners have and the you know attendees on the Love Like Amina cruise were wanting answered. But I tell you what, even listening to... Michael right there, it's like, he's such a counselor. He's Isn't so he wise. Good? He's so stinking smart. Yeah, I mean, at one point, you won't be able to see this because you're just listening to the audio, but at one point, I felt like they were counseling me, <laughs> Dr. Julie and Dr. Michael, so I laid down on the stage like I was on a couch and the place just roared. But they are not just counseling us, they were counseling everybody with incredible wisdom about questions that we all have Mm. that we need answered and uh you've only heard just a part of it so we're going to go back and hear the rest of what we had to say on that panel that evening we had a number of questions about submission questions like How do you submit to a husband that doesn't seem to recognize his part Mm. and his tone is harsh and disrespectful of his wife's voice or he uses the Bible or his position in the home to get what he wants? Yeah. Boy, let me just preface this by saying this is such a complex and deep issue Mm -hmm. that we can't possibly do justice to the topic even if we spent the rest of this panel time discussing it. Because we can't speak to the specifics of each case. And and not only the specifics Mm. of each case, but the complexity of what submission is in the scripture and how that is played out today. So um, so I want to say that for this couple who's asking a question like this, don't just take this one answer, but but get some help, get some resources. I wrote a book called Finding the Hero in Your Husband that 
really deals with some of the complexity of this. Very, very good book. Love yeah. it, book. It's a great book. Yeah. So, um, so here's what I will say. Submission is about power. Okay. Uh, submission is about asking the Lord, how do I use my power wisely? And in our flesh, it's natural for, I'm going to talk to women in particular right now, for women to say, I want to use my power in such a way that becomes degrading to my husband. And Proverbs 14, one says the wise woman builds her house, but the, but the foolish one tears hers down and left to our own devices. We as women sometimes will become very destructive in our words and in our posture and our attitude towards our husband. And so submission is counsel to us in the scripture of be wise, how you use your power. Um, because you can tear your husband down. You can tear down the potential that God has put within him. But notice that God wants you to use your power. And there are times uh, in every marriage, and particularly in marriages where boundaries need to be set, that you need to stand up and stand for what's right. And that's why this is such a complex topic. Um, But I want to say that submission is more about the posture of your heart than it is a role or a particular thing. It's about First, submitting to the Lord, um, God, what what is wise and godly in this situation? And then using your God-given power in a way that builds up rather than tearing down. Uh, but it, but when it becomes a, as complicated as this kind of question, mm-hmm. you really do need outside counsel to help you kind of tease out what's the specifics of mm-hmm. the dynamics here. And to speak to, to the men in this kind of a case, uh, if we are lording it over our wives and demanding her submission, we're we're missing the mark. We're living in sin mm-hmm. because that is not what Christ called for. He called for us to be submissive. We know the passage. You know, wives cherish, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her. Um, and so, if we're if we are taking that stance, we're the one that's living in sin. But it's not her place to point out that my my sin. Uh, that's probably going to be done on her knees as she prays and God breaks me, but I have to allow myself to be broken. Yeah. But it case. may be her, her job to set the boundary. It very likely is going to be mm-hmm. and, and is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mark 10, uh, not so with you. It, it, they lord it over, but not so with you right. is what Jesus says to his followers. We, Jesus always used his power to empower other people. They were always more because of how he treated them, never less. Just think about that for just a second. Hmm. There have been many situations where I paused and stopped and thought, okay, the way I've been treating my wife, talking to her, tone of my voice, look in my eyes, she is now less because of how I'm treating her. That is not being a godly husband. Yes. She should be more because of how I treat her. That's always what happened when Jesus interacted with people. He used his power to make them more, what they couldn't be without what he did for them. We are all more. We have forgiveness. We have grace. We have hope. We have, that's more, never less. And so that's a test, guys. When we look in the mirror to go, how am I treating my wife? And this whole submission thing, like, I need to look at what I'm doing and how that's impacting her. And I, and I would just add from a husband's side, I know Ann's going to talk about this tomorrow with the women, but she has done that for me, made me more. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways. It does. And many of you know our story, but for years it wasn't that way. It was more she tore me down and critiqued, and I deserved it, but I became less. I actually sort of pulled away to to where people were saying I was a good man. And she, this is the most incredible, life-giving woman in the world to me. I have become the man I think God's called me to be because of her belief in me. Mm-hmm. So it's a transformation. That's what she's going to talk about tomorrow. I want to come mm-hmm. up on stage and say, ladies, listen, <laughs> this is a journey that is hard to do, but man, it it brings the best out of your man. And, and I'll just add, and that's really nice. It's Thanks true. for saying that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You have a thing with my head right now. <laughs> it's like I am strong, like super strong. Yes. <laughs> and I will say Dave has been amazing. If he would go big on me and be demanding and say, like, this is what we're going to do because I'm the head of the house and you need to submit, I would 
I would just buck against that so mm-hmm. much. My per- and especially when I was younger, because I didn't know the scripture, I didn't know Jesus, and like, and I was worried. I was so fearful that I would become like my mom, or there's so many fears behind that. Mm. But his love and his belief is what makes me want to follow him. Mm. Like it's it's so compelling when your spouse is listening and your partners it's so beautiful and biblical yeah mm-hmm. but hard but hard yeah mm-hmm. yeah to, two two words uh gentle and lowly isn't there somebody on the boat who wrote a oh, book about that good one. you know that's the posture right mm-hmm. um and then the other one is the message we had last night from brian and stephanie about respect yeah uh, the whole first peter five passage starts with treat each other with respect yeah mm-hmm. And that may look a little bit differently in different relationships, but that's the heart of it. Go back and listen to that message again. See if there's not something all of All of them are simply about reflecting who Christ is, yeah. being him, acting like him. Christ was profoundly invitational. We'll, we'll talk about this uh, tomorrow. But the only people I see him being harsh with were those that were using his word to wound others. Yes. You know, oh. he, was, he was harsh with them. Wow. But everybody else, he was profoundly invitational with. Yeah, that's and, good. And he was always creating space that drew them, that wooed them, that yeah. to, to get them to follow him. And a, and a husband or a wife that tries to, to lord it over, those are the people that Christ was harshest with. But, you know, let us not be that person. We've been listening to a portion of a talk that we gave on a panel on the Love Like You Mean It cruise. And um, boy, I tell you what Michael said right there at the end. I don't want to be that person. They had so much wisdom (laughs) with the questions that were presented to them. And I just appreciate them giving some clarity because so often we don't know the steps to take. We don't know the answers to the questions that we have about our marriages, about our intimacy. And so the wisdom that they brought was helpful, not only to our audience, but to you and to me. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, the audience was very appreciative of the wisdom. And a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it was in the area of intimacy. Yeah. And this is a, a topic it's often hard to talk about. You know, it's easy to make jokes about. We were joking about it. Yeah. Because it's so awkward sometimes, especially as we even talked about getting older and what that looks like. Yeah. I don't know how much (laughs) our audience or our listeners want to hear about that, but um, it's real. And some of our listeners are struggling with those issues as well. So all I can say is... Sign up for next year. Yeah. I was going to (laughs) say, if you missed it, you missed it. You know, it's one thing to hear it today on a broadcast, but it's a whole different deal to sit in that room and to walk on those decks and get off at, you know, ports of call around the around the country. Yeah, don't you want to sit, hear that talk, (laughs) and then the next day you get you're in the Bahamas, you're with an iced tea, you know, sitting with the sun coming. And the other great thing that happens on the cruise is you meet Mm. some incredible people. I can't tell you how many people I ran into. That we're with another couple and said, we met five years ago on the cruise yeah. and we live in different states, but we're still best friends and talk every month. And we do this cruise every together year. every year. And again, uh, you can sign up. FamilyLifeToday.com is where you can find the link to sign up for the Love Like You Mean a Cruise 2025. I think 30% of the cruise ship is already filled. Yeah. And so call today, go online today at familylifetoday.com. Sign up for the Love Like You Mean It Marriage Cruise. We will be there and we hope to see you. I'm Shelby Abbott and you've been listening to Dave and Ann Wilson on Family Life Today. They give glowing reviews, obviously, for the Love Like You Mean It Cruise and I've been on it too. It's incredible. So, What if today, right now today in mid-March, you did something that covered you, that booked you for Valentine's Day in 2025? What if you had next year's Valentine's Day already covered? Do you think your spouse would appreciate maybe an eight-day cruise? 
over that period of time. You know, I don't know your spouse, but I'm guessing that would be a total win for Valentine's Day. Unless, of course, they're afraid of, you know, luxury cruise liners, the ocean, warm weather, and, you know, all you can eat soft serve ice cream. But for everybody else, we're sailing from February 8th to the 15th, 2025, out of Miami, Florida. So, like Dave said, you can book right now at familylifetoday.com. This is going to be the lowest price that will be available for this sailing, and we expect it to sell out. So, don't delay. You can go to the link that's available in the show notes, or you can go to familylifetoday.com and click on the Love Like You Mean It banner. Or you can give us a call to make your reservation at 800 358 6329. That's 800 F as in family, L as in life, and of course, then the word today. Did you know that Jesus consistently cares for you regardless of how you might be doing right now? Good or bad, apathetic or sincere, Christ loves and pursues you right here, right now. Well, tomorrow, Dane Ortland is going to be unpacking what that means for you, and I can't wait to hear more from him. That's coming up tomorrow. We hope you'll join us. On behalf of David Ann Wilson, I'm Shelby Abbott. We'll see you back next time for another edition of Family Life Today. Family Life Today is a donor-supported production of Family Life, a crew ministry helping you pursue the relationships that matter most.